Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make what I'm calling a woven tab card. It's a special kind of interactive card that I just invented, and that's my name for it. And I'm using the Clawsome stamp set, brand new from Lawn Fawn. It's got this little claw machine. If you've ever played with those when you were a kid, you put your quarter in and a little claw comes down and grabs a toy. I'm going to do three of them across this card and I'm using the Misty to do that and I'm stamping it onto some Bristol because I'm going to be coloring it with the Zig Clean Color Markers and this paper works really great with those pens. You can see I'm sliding this up the Misty so that I can arrange it to get three in a row, three different machines, but I want to have different critters in each one, different toys in each one. So I've stamped it onto some acetate in place and I'm making sure my paper doesn't go anywhere and then I'm going to slide sticky notes underneath to block out the animals, the toys that are on either on the ones on either side of this so I can make two other different machines on either side and it can look like one of those rows where you have a whole bunch of different claw machines to choose from. So how easy was that to mask those little pieces out? You could do it with a square. If you want to do this with just one of the um, the claw machines, you could stamp it on the acetate the same kind of a way, line it up exactly where you want it, and then cut a square piece of sticky note right underneath it there. Alternatively, you could do what I know some people do, which is cut the stamp itself and chop them out. I wouldn't advise that because it makes the rectangularness of the stamp a little less viable. It kind of gets wobbly. So this tends to be a little bit easier to do this. I'm not even worrying about making them centered because it's just a scene and I'm going to just kind of go crazy coloring it and having a lot of stamping and coloring fun on this. Showing you real quickly how I did my masking. I'm using the Dad and Me set, which is great for Father's Day, by the way, and using the little bears to stamp these. I'm just using sticky notes and shoving them in there. It's really not crucial to get every bit of your masking perfect on this because you just need a jumble of images in there to make it look like a whole bunch of toys. This one on the left is using the unicorn from the Clossum stamp set. There's a single unicorn in there as well as some single bears, which I'll be using later too. I've got my fingertip knife, which I find the easiest for doing little slices like this. And I'm going to slice along that bottom section of the oval, of the little part where the toy goes in, as well as a half inch slice, or actually three quarter inch slice, at the top, above and below the little banner on the top section. And that's where we're going to weave through the, the tab that's going to work on this and make it interactive. This is a half inch piece and it's the full five and a half length of this five and a half by five and a half cardstock, this Bristol cardstock. And I just kind of stamped it randomly in the middle and I'll figure out exactly how far it needs to go. But see how it's woven in there? It's underneath the top panel and then slides into that little hole where the toy goes in. So now I'm going to zoom through really quickly and I'm not going to tell you all the colors because I just picked a bunch of random colors and kept mixing them. It's kind of fun with the Zig Clean Color Markers to see what colors work together, which ones look which way together, which ones are better for shading with other ones. And on something like this, it doesn't matter. You can just make them all sorts of fun colors and not stress out about the details of exactly which colors are perfect because you're just trying to get the impression of all these fun toys and I think the more multicolor they are the more fun they are going to be for kids. With these bears on this right hand side I'm going to be coloring them my favorite way to color bears which is black bears with brown noses. That's just something I find really fun. So I'm using two grays to create a little bit of shading on these not get too super crazy with them but I'm filling in the blank spaces if there's places you didn't get on your stamping then go ahead and throw in a little extra dark color just to fill it in. And this one, I'm just going to add a little bit of a light blue color for the shading so I can have white unicorns. And then I'm adding some bright colors onto their little unicorn horns. And now I'm going to throw some colors into the machines themselves. And these again are going to be bright colors. And I'm just going to alternate the colors around, the colors that I'm already using. I'll have one machine that'll be orange, one machine that'll be a teal, and you know, just play around with what colors you feel like having on here. It's not crucial to 
to really worry about color theory or anything else. This is just a lot of fun, happy color. And with this Bristol, the colors blend pretty well. Sometimes you can go over them a couple times in order to smooth things out a little bit. But I'm not stressing about shading a whole lot on this at all because just trying to put some fun color in here to create these three little machines. I'm bouncing back and forth with the colors around the details on them and then adding some grays in order to do some of the metal parts on the machines, including the little claw here. I have two different grays there, a little bit on that metal part in the center. And next I'm going to start coloring the, the claw that's going to be the interactive part and just throwing some stripes of gray to make that look like a gray column. And then let that sit and dry for a bit because I didn't want to insert it or try it, test it out or anything until it was completely dry. So in the meantime, I went back and started working on this bottom part and I was playing around with water. I'm not a big fan of water with the Zig Clean color pens, but I thought I'm going to try it a little bit on the Bristol and it kind of worked. Um, it's not watercolor paper, so it got a little curled. So I didn't want to use too much water, but I did soften out some of that blending with the water and just a, a water watercolor brush. Threw in a little bit of stripes of blue to make that glass look glass. And now I'm going to go back and start working on the mechanism itself. And here, the little bear that's going to be in the claw, it's not going to fit on this half inch, but you really need it to be about a half inch. So I have stamped him carefully enough that I can kind of just make him some short arms with a pen. And I'm using a Sharpie pen, which is waterproof, so I can use my Zig Clean colors to add some color to him. While I was doing this one, I did have another bear colored, and I'm going to use him in a special way too in just a second, but I'm going to get this shoved in here. And the other bear I tucked into a slot in the hole. The video disappeared for that section, but you can see him kind of hanging out down there. And I taped over the back so that my tab wouldn't get stuck on the, the little place where the bear sticks into the card. And now I'm creating a little T where that's going to hold the tab so it's not going to slide too high and come out of the card. So if you give this to a little child, they won't be yanking it all apart and pulling the tab out and then not being able to slide it back in. So here's my little bear who's going to sit on the very top because I decided I needed one more bear for this mechanism because I wanted to have a way to kind of cover up that top section and tell people this is what you pull. So I'm using some little dimensional adhesive, these little power tabs, and I created a little bridge right over top of where that slider comes in and out. That little tab is going to go there and I have adhesive on the left and right of it. And then I snugged it down so that the bear is hidden entirely inside his little hidey hole. And then I'll trim off that top edge. The last step is to punch a hole in that top tab and thread some twine through it. So I threaded a loop of twine and then I'm going to pull the edges through those two ends. And there we have it, the finished card that slides up and down really gently. It's been glued onto a card base and a layer of black in such a way that I didn't put any adhesive right behind where that tab mechanism is going to function. But I made sure I put some right behind that pull area so that it doesn't pull up from the card and stays pretty secure. So there's pictures on my blog if you want to go pin this so you remember how the heck I did this sucker. And you can watch some more videos here and you can subscribe by clicking on my face and I will see you guys next time. Have a really, really wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by.